Jesus, this was the work that he was sent to earth to do, was to die for the sins of the world. In John 6, 38, he says this. He says, I came down from heaven. Now this shows this wasn't a forced thing. He came by himself from heaven without anyone bringing him along, forcing him along the way. I came down. There's that voluntary spirit there. I came down. Like, I wanted, I want to do this. But he says, but it wasn't to do my will. He adds that. But to do the will of him that sent me. So let's consider how Jesus, he submitted, he submitted to the Father when he died on the cross. Amen. And he actually gave us a picture of what kind of people he's going to produce when he does that. So, I mean, there's no question about Jesus being sent into the world. I mean, he constantly made reference to them. Him that sent me. He says this a lot in the scriptures. Me and him who sent me. So, I mean, this was very much emphasized in the work of Christ, that he was sent to do this. That, and even, uh, God, we have this popular passage, God so loved the world, he gave, gave, that, that's that sending. It was like initiated by him. Jesus said to be delivered up according to the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. Like, God's working something here. This is what God's work, he's doing God's work. So God's in this working, seeing to it that this is brought to pass. And he's the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. So, I mean, this is, this is something that's in the divine arrangement of sorts. A divine working that Jesus was sent to do this. This was even before the world was made. It was determined he would be sent to do this work. The work of salvation, it required submission from the word who was with God and was God. Jesus did not resist God in any way or form concerning this work. He humbled himself, willingly did it. Humbled himself, made a little lower than the angels, in the form of a servant. He became a man, but not one noted for riches and great might, but rather the word came to earth and became as like an ordinary man, so to speak. One that did not have the appearance of authority, power, or wisdom. Now throughout his ministry on earth, Jesus was consumed with the will of the Father. I mean, so much so that he didn't just speak. Jesus didn't speak freely. He said, the words I speak are like, they're the Father's words. Amen. It was that. It was down to that very detail that he didn't like waste speech. Yeah. Everything Jesus did was full in full submission to the Father. Amen. Saying what he wanted him to say, going where he wanted him to go, doing what he wanted him to do. But the thing is, he was obedient unto death, which is what the scriptures emphasize. That one act of obedience that resulted in justification of life that's the death on the cross right. by the act by the act, one righteous act of obedience that's what we want to highlight there that's the ultimate submission right there because that's what he was sent to do was to die everything up to that point was to maintain that pure sacrifice but this is really what the defining moment was in jesus life here in the earth but he's been highly exalted since then he did die and put away the sin of the world. He's buried, but he's raised from the dead now. I'm glad that we serve a living Savior. He's been highly exalted for doing this work, dying on the cross. He's been highly exalted because he did that. Sitting at the right hand of God today, reigning in full of power. Now, after reading all of the, about all these things, doesn't this tell you something about the kind of people Jesus produced as a result of dying for the sin of the world? He has produced a people that are zealous of good works, a people that actually have the mind he had when he was dwelling in the earth. Let the mind of Christ dwell within you. Well, he, that same mind is in the earth today in his followers. Li living for the one who died for them, not living for self. I mean, that's a product of the death of Jesus Christ. It really is. Jesus has shown us that you're never worse off for submitting yourself to the Lord. I mean, we looked at the cross. That's like a reminder. You're not worse off for submitting yourself to God. He has shown us that we're better off for putting the will of God above our own. As he demonstrated himself, he did this. He's shown us how good of, of an outcome comes for those who do that. Jesus was not at a disadvantage at any time for doing what the Father sent him to do. And we are not at a disadvantage either for submitting to God, putting him first, as Jesus did. Jesus has demonstrated divine submission and humility on the cross. And because of his obedience to God, men now have provision made for them to walk even as he walked. So I say to continue to submit yourself to the Lord, and let the cross be a means of encouraging you to continue in that. Amen. Jesus, I mean, he benefited from submitting to God. Do you think you won't? 
reason on that. I mean, living for God, it's a logical response to the cross of Christ. When someone's really confronted with the gospel, the preaching of the cross, which some call foolishness, but when they really believe that, that's like just a natural response. It's like, I can't live for myself anymore. This isn't good enough. Living for God, now that's worth it. That's what that's what Jesus does when we that's what we kind of the spirit behind this table is let's let's not let's live for the one who died for us. Amen. I mean there's really no reason I have really to live for myself when I'm alive because of Jesus. It really comes down to that. In fact, I've just come to this conclusion. I mean, it's not right to really think anything about myself at this time. Yeah. Not to be concerned with anything going on personally. This is a disgrace at this time. That's really what this table shows me. At this time, I'm not thinking about anyone except Jesus, and that's the way it always should be. It's Jesus' time. We give it all to him. Every thought, every even imagination or word, it all's his at this time. And he just earned it. So remember, if you ever feel the need to put God on hold and save some time for yourself, remember Jesus, who came not to do his own will, but the will of God. So let's submit our own selves at this time. As Jesus gives that, that humility and that submission on the cross, let's submit ourselves to him Amen. and give him every, give everything we have to him right now. That's the, right, that's the right spirit to have at a time like this. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful. We always give thanks for the Son of God. We're thankful for Jesus Christ. We're thankful for everything he's given us. And we pray, Lord, that we would not allow anything to subtly sneak into our minds that would take away from honoring him at this time. Pray in your son's name. Amen.